Boys and girls, I, I try to talk through this. I begin. You're all standing. I want to say, like McNamara's band, the crowd is small and few in number, but the best in all the land. I'm so delighted to see those of you, because my real friends are here today. But I must preempt by saying and asking them to understand this. I had an accident three weeks before Christmas. I hurt my forehead, my body, my whole lot, and I'm under medication from pain and things. So please forgive me if I appear just that little bit, not as calm as I try to be anyway, so if you know what I mean. And I also had a resident for 10 weeks, don't tell you thinking in the error wrong now, a resident in my home of influenza, had four uh, relapses. So I, I had, this, this was the unhappiest Christmas I ever had. The only thing that kept me going, doctors or no doctors, paracetamols or whatever, since I was in, uh, since you, I said, and I got all my posters together, I was throwing, throwing them into my wheelie bin, and a friend said, Tom, you are throwing away history, because in times to come, you'll see by the admission prices, one and six and two and six. Yeah. I have one taken down Brosnan, a Brosnan, at Mr. Connolly, Concord, admission, a shil one and six a shilling, and sixpence standing. Yes. <laughs> we don't cross now. Those are the days. And those of you who watch it, great to see you ladies. These are ladies of us. Do you mind if we stop and read the picture? Say <laughs> that in French. Well, what happened was, I was throwing away all these portions, and some friends of mine said, Tom, I'll have your own room. One and six, two shillings. Here, you see, in the big days, need I tell those who were well in life? Sure, all my pro I, I look at I could go through each you individual as, as to why you're here and why I asked you now. Because, you know, I hold you, each you, each of you, in high esteem for your friendship, your love, your cooperation, the fun and the crack. Now, those may I allude to the documentary about that lady last night, wonderful lady last night on television. May I allude to that? Those were the times we went through. In the good old days, now, Jackie Bogdan and Tommy English will tell you, the big stars were in Dublin. Jimmy O'Dea, Jack Cruz, Cecil Sheridan, Martin Potter. They were all there. They came out to Dublin, to Limerick for a week or two every year, and packed the place, cruise a mile long. But they, that was it. But we went in, Pascal, my good self, great to see Pascal looking so well. Because mm. he, he goes hey. on there. there. Hey. 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 Good to see you. But, but we went into the villages and the towns of Ireland before uh, uh, into the Mickey Mouse halls uh, fr from Gogan Barra to, uh, where's my friend from Kerry? Yeah. Geneva Gwil, is it? That's it. Willie down the mountains in the valley. We brought, and some provincial newspapers from time to time, and got the late Gus Smith, yeah. yes. Tom Hennigan, and many more said in the Sunday national papers and dailies that Pascal, Tom and Pascal, in, we, when we became Tom and Pascal, we brought laughter and joy and a little bit of comfort to the people of Ireland when we're looking to have a loaf of bread on the table. Let's be honest about it, as that little documentary will tell you last night, times are very bad. The little people in the villages and towns had nothing. And a school teacher told me that a week before we came to town, the ch they could get no good to the children in the classrooms. They were excited at Tom and Pascal coming to the village. Let's be honest about it, it was a great thing. A laughter, music dancing, singing, and all that. Then, 
a week after they got no good because they were talking you all the jokes and the things. Mm. So I'm telling you, now this is not a publicity stunt. There will be no, I get no booking out of today. <laughs> <laughs> no booking, I did. Mr. Willie Bennett, who, uh, who appears regularly on television with the Irish team, congratulations. <laughs> I get no booking out of this, there's no books, but we had books, CDs, and, and Mr. Bennett said, bring them along and sell them. I said, no, today is not a money making thing, I'm just selling. I only want to sell. Can I say this to you, lads? And that the tariffs will have no effect on me. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just sharing my moment of happiness of 50 years entertaining from my days with the college players, Sicilians and pantomimes. And then we joined forces in 61, winning the National Talent Competition and opened at the opening night of television. Was you in right? Oh, oh, right. right. Now, the point about it is, I want to share tonight. To, 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 now, Mr. Bennett. Very kindly, I said to him, I, put my, I want to celebrate my 50s by having posters of the era going back. So I dug them out of the wheel even, got uh, Frank Cummins, is it? Kevin Cummins, yeah, Kevin. To, to put them together and to, put, to push him, dress them up and make them look respectable. These are not publicity stunts. These are not an ego trip. These are none of these. I'll be dead and gone, and please God, we are within time. But these is part of local history. I must draw your attention to this. This is the only one in captivity. I defy anyone in Liverpool City or County to produce, not that particular one, the college players, uh, well, the flagship of entertainment in Liverpool. Big deal. And I was in the School of Dramatic Art at the time, big deal too. And Kevin Deneen promoted me. Yeah. He, thought, he thought I was some bit of talent. Me. And he brought me into this player called Dale Dempsey in 1954. This is the college players, 1954. Admission, 12 and 6, reserved. <laughs> and 1 and 3, if you don't mind. At ne booking at Nilly Martins. Yeah. And I must tell you, that was the very first time I appeared on a stage professionally. I didn't get paid because I was a student in the garden. But at the same time, I got a bottle of lemonade in the boy. It was a very paper. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Denny, Len's, Len's sports commentator. So that's the very first time I ever appeared. And you'll notice I'm known as Thomas O'Donnell. Because there was a solicitor in town at the time who was one of the directors here, Tom O'Donnell. His son is now the judge here in our Limerick area. And so to distinguish me from the great Tom O'Donnell, the well, well dressed man in love, the as he sort of said, to distinguish me, Kevin Deney, being politically correct, called me Thomas. So I was Thomas O'Donnell before we become Thomas. So this picture is my most valuable one. The most valuable one I have here in the world, but which I have been offered money from time, big money, by a certain hotel in Shannon, and I refused it. Now, however, I could afford this. This is the concert that never happened. Because in 1963, we were going out, I'll tell you about the personnel, we were going out to perform in Shannon. Larry Kennedy, Joan Neal, Anthony yeah. Nolan. Yeah. By the way, Anthony Nolan just got off the plane in Shannon to be, where are you, Anthony? Is Come on, Anthony, where are you hiding? Right here. Anthony Nolan, just look at him, he's still asleep in jet lag. <laughs> just got off the plane from, what, where did you leave? Houston, Texas. Uh, Kennedy Airport. Houston. Houston, Houston. Houston. Houston Texas. Kenton, Texas, just today, or to be here today, he's still asleep. <laughs> Anthony Nolan, his two sons are very successful with Michael Flatley. Here, then, uh, Anthony Nolan, Jerry O'Brien, right joined here. us at the Mechanics <laughs> Institute. Come on, Mr. Buckley. The RC, 12-year-old, this boy was selling programs, <laughs> selling <laughs> lots of tickets. <laughs> and for years, until he was 25, yeah. what's his, what's your name? 23 years old. Well, until you were 25, he was still 15-year-old. 15-year-old. Jerry O'Brien is very successful as m m music <laughs> director etc. with the Bon Rashi singers who have toured America and, and Australia dozens of times. Jerry, now we've seen you. The youngest member of our company. And a gentleman. And I want to say that this thing here, anyway, it was, I went out and it's written here, I cancelled the program. I told the queue waiting outside that the, the President of America had been shot dead. He was dead. And the way up we are. Oh, yeah. So this is the show that never occurred. This is my most valuable picture. I went over to the door, oh, the crowd walked away, shocked. And I, I, I removed that, but then took it home. And I still have it, and it's very important to me. Now, these are in the article by the boys, but I'm the happiest days of my life. 
mm. is today. Mm. Because I'm among friends, friends, not just colleagues and all that, people that grew up with me, people that fell. And I had a wonderful life. Now remember, there's no money in our times. And for example, <laughs> I brought a cast of six the only in my, what, what, what was the driving thing, Pascal? Oh, Don't say four down there. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving a, a car there, six. And below in the great Glen Eagle Hall, yeah. I had brought six members with me. So, six nights a week, right. four months for two years in a row. And you were already a six and a half down, back up 75 miles. And for bringing five artists with myself and my petrol, Morris or Dunn, oh God rest his soul, <laughs> gave me the big sum of 25 pounds for the whole of it. 25 <laughs> sterling for a cast of six. My petrol here. And if there was anything, a pastor had to go to your car. If there was anything, they had those station chefs. They got the cold tea. I only say that to say the people going into the Glen Eagle now and they're getting one and two, in the stand up fellas, for one and two thousand pounds for one night. Yeah. So I'm showing you all the money from the town down and made out of show business. <laughs> Only the state is good to me and I have my independence mm -hmm. and I'm very happy with this. He had said, this man owned the Limerick Leader Bunch and all of us there. He had eight pages in the Limerick Leader of entertainment. <laughs> and he had time for everyone, amateurs, <laughs> professionals, and everybody. And had a good word for everybody. And encouraged young amateurs who just stepped out onto the stage. Errol was always there. And Errol, thank you for your kindness to Pascal, myself, and all the others. Jack, welcome. <laughs> every, one, Mrs. Well, every one of you here today means something. I, I hope Charlie Foley. Charlie Foley. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The radio man. I, 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 I could go on and on and on. Jerry O'Brien, Tony O'Sullivan, Timmy. Timmy. Ah, come out, come out, come out here. 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 Come and he said, Tommy says, there's a little fella here. Now, let's be honest about you know, <laughs> it. A little fella here, I want you to hear him. <coughs> so up on the stage came this little fella, that height. And I must tell the company now, like all young fellas of your day, you were wearing Russian boots. <laughs> the water rushed in the front of the back. But Timmy Tim was only, was it 10 years of age? Seven. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, you know, I was the You're oldest. pushing your look now, hold on. <laughs> He, he came on to say, and he sang, Kiss Me Quick, the, the, the Elvis Presley number. Oh, yeah. He sang it and I ran all the way home and all that. Timmy was only 10 years, or 10 years of age, we settled for 10. And we brought him into Christmas, two Christmas crackers shows, and yeah. brought him all over Ireland. Yeah. And he was only a kid, and his father had a post office book. He's which he looked after a while. Um, sorry, and it is red gandy. I didn't see it. Sorry? It was and also, may I say very humbly, we provided you with a livelihood. Really? Yeah, very good. And you were very successful. Timmy King. And Papi great. Church. God bless you. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy not King. Not in Number oh. one and not in all. Go for it. Go back to the base. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're Timmy, very well. Timmy, you need the record. Tony <laughs> Sullivan, <laughs> stage manager. I was vulnerable to some people that they took advantage of me in business. Mm -hmm. I had no business head. I loved show business. I was so romantic. Mm -hmm. When I was 10 years of age, I was going to go to my aunt in, uh, in East London and go to all the local music halls and then the big boys playing. Go to see it. I love showbiz. I love the old style song and dance. Mm. And also Ray Kennedy, yes. yeah. Mr. Yeah. Taylor. Yeah. 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 Mm. I, 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 uh, the old bog singing songs, but Larry has gone to his reward and a grandfather and good fun, yes. good fun. The second is Abel O'Connor, mm. who is over in Florida, as you all know. Well, he has, a, he has two tasks now. One. To, uh, to bear the intense heat, and secondly with the hurricanes. Yeah. But I know Eamon would love to be here today, but he can't. But I'm glad that you're all still alive and all so well, and that each of you in your own business did so well artistically and commercially in your own business. Tony Nolan you know, just got the play, I was so delighted to see you. I hope I'm not leaving out anybody, all the former so, so thank you so much for coming along, an old friend again. I have friends everywhere. People said to me, People said to me, you know, at times, they say, Tom O'Donnell, 
You made a lot of money out of show business. <laughs> Yourself and Pat the most millionaires. Are you with me? I was so glad to get your money to framed it. What? I said, I was so glad to get your money to framed it. But as I was saying, though, ladies and gentlemen, as I was saying, I have so much to say, I'm bubbling. Mm. And, and if, if today doesn't cure my illness, my two illnesses, I have said a residency with, with the flu bug, and then I had a dreadful fall three weeks before Christmas. And can I say, at a quiet level, an hour and a half after that fall, I pulled myself together and I did a recording for Claire FM that mm. went out very successfully. Mental. But the listeners didn't hear that, what had happened to me. And, and my head got an awful bang, and I only hope this isn't affecting my del delivery today. No, no, no. No. But his lovely senior, he taught me so much. Pascal and myself, now what can I say about Pascal? Don't we had a one <laughs> we, 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 of course, it's 61. People said, how did you become Tom and Pascal? When I was big deal for a long time, big deal. Limerick, what was it, Pascal? Limerick's own comedian. Limerick. Oh, yes. My mother inspired that. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, anyway, you'll see the posters, sir. But anyway, later on, uh, the competition uh, came then, and then as you come in, Mrs. Sarsfield yeah. and her daughter, Frank Sarsfield's good lady, Vera, lovely senior. Yeah. Jack, I, I just see what's in Frankie Sarsfield's way. Yeah. Lovely senior yeah. one. But as I say, Pascal and myself joined forces then, and we <laughs> went ahead, and you can see the posters there. And how happy I am, and it's funny. And Pascal and myself had the Fred O'Donovan said that Tom O'Donnell and Pascal Grady was too long. When there was a few thousand above in Hartcourt Street, the four provinces, right. your father won half it. No, no, no. Anyway, I'm going to continue my saga and tell you why you're all here today. Great to see you. Right. But as I was saying, I passed myself for a long and we had great times. In the course of which we took in our stride, topping the bill twice in time. <laughs> closed, we, we closed the old theatre royal. We were the last. There's, there's, there's documentary evidence there. The, the evening herald at Royal Parade, Tom and Pascal, Jimmy Campbell, Tommy Dando, the Royal Lids, Frankie Blores, there's names. And who's your name? Who's your name? Jim Connors and the Circle. But Pascal, old lady, and all of you have been such wonderful companions. Mm. i tell you something. Not one of the people who were in my show, so to speak, I've never difficulty over money or over anything. Mm. And they were all ready when I called. Back at was Jerry O'Brien's mother and father would have his shorts and everything ready for him. Mm. And I bought Gary on outside your house, there was a queue mm. waiting to see the two boys from from Hockney on that show again. Jamboree. 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 Jerry Hannon of our in law, you're making a great work and very hard to get going. I wish you well. <laughs> your intentions are very good and keep up the good work and your standards and all the rest. Please, God, glad to see you. I, I hope I'm not leaving anybody out. John Dillon. Oh, gee, listen, I hope I, I'm not leaving Tom English. I said, Tom, Tom was down the road for us, the Savoy, who gave great service to him, booked in our big stars and brought, and was a great help. So, as I say, I, I get to see Mary, Pascal's wife, you get Mary. I hope I'm at least. Who's that big tall guy out in the back? Who's that security man? 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 Who's that because I, you were all so good, and Kelly, but <laughs> I've overcome. Mr. Bennett, you, uh, you gave me, you invited me to put my poster display on, 
As I said, there'd be no booking out of this. This is not an ego trick. Yeah, so this is Willie, we just plain Willie Bennett. Good Limerick man, his father was, was for years with the Limerick Steam. Uh, Limerick Steamship Company. Steam 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 yes, yes. And you yourself, mm. you're a regular on the television screen with the Irish team, Massoud. I'd say a water carrier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the box is going in my day. I'm kind of like an eight tickets club, so what I do is I carry the bags. <laughs> just me, it's just as well, easy. Well, I want to thank you for <laughs> allowing me to put my posters up there. To bring, to bring, I called my display, by the way, in case you didn't see. I called it. Uh, windows on yesterday. You did indeed. indeed. <laughs> and um, I, on behalf, Tom, it's a pleasure and a privilege to host your actual collection of posters in the permanent TSB. The TSB goes back a long, long way in Limerick, and the Limerick Savings Bank went back many, many years and probably hosted a good few accounts before I came to town. Uh, so I'd like, like to thank all the people that supported the Limerick TSB became the TSB, and now we're the permanent TSB, but we're basically one bank, we're here in William Street, and uh, as Carly knows, we're he we'll be here for a good few years yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Tom, it's a privilege and a pleasure to host your photos. 50 years of entertainment, you've entertained the country, you've entertained the world before entertainment started, when people were poor and when people were rich. It didn't matter, you entertained them all. And you're a living legend, one and only living legend in Limerick. Here, here. I wish you many, many years of happiness, and I'd like to join Pascal as well, many of years ago was there, course, with uh, you together. Yes. That, especially May I add a PS to your talk about it? Yeah. I have a small account with your bank. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd never mention it. <laughs> below in Salford. Below in Salford for a long time. So it's there, but it keeps me off the soup queue. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you something. The lovely staff. Oh, yeah, I was going to see Stella here a while ago. Yes. And, and Tom, the other boy. Yes. Now, I want to tell you something. I'm on your books for, for a while. Now, before that, my father, God rest his soul, mm. Pop, Pop, as I called him, Pop was with your bank for years and years. Now, my grandfather, at the early part of the last century, post Great War and Titanic, had an account with your bank, which was then known very humbly as the Penny Bank. Yeah. Above yeah. opposite the Clemson. Joe 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 the youngest member of the company is uh, educating no, no, the most senior member of the company. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I had, I had, it's not upset that we had it. And the lawyer, and, and Limerick have been very loyal to your company. Yes. And you have been, and you have proved your loyalty to me, and I want to thank you very much. Pascal Davis has said, you'll be asking over this game of the company. You don't have to see the models of the company. Get up at 3 o'clock. Now, now this can, is how you Can I just say to everyone as well, uh, I know we have a number of distinguished people here today, oh, without mentioning names, but everyone is very, very welcome here today. And it is tis, um, Tom's day, and Tom celebrate. But everybody, distinguished guests, you're all very, very welcome. There, there's drinks there hidden away in the corner. We get to them. We have a, we have a, a few uh, sandwiches and bits and pieces for later on. So that we'll see you Well, you carry on. With your permission, you carry on. There's wonderful people here. One of the people who like to see it go was and that was called upon Jackie Bort. The man here. so much for Irish education. Jack, former mayor of Limerick and one of our own. Nice to see you, Jack. It's great to see you, Tom, great to see Pascal. It's great to see all the crew again. Um, it's going back a long time to, since um, Tom English and his wife Anne and Monica and myself went to see yourself and Pascal in the Mechanics Hall. Mm -hmm. And the place was jammed to the doors and it had gone on for some weeks. And I remember meeting you some time later walking up the street and saying to you, Tom, how would you fancy doing Christmas in the City Theatre? What did I say? You said, are you serious? Yes. That's exactly what you said, are you serious? <laughs> and I said I was serious. Anyway, to make a long story short, uh, my father, he used to ring every night to see what business was like. 
especially when there are shows on. And in those days, um, Mondays and Tuesdays were uh, funeral days in, in the mm -hmm. theatre business. Mm -hmm. But he'd ring every night, he said, what are you doing for Christmas? I said, I'm putting in a local show. We're two fellas, Tom O'Donnell and Pascal already. He said, you're mad. Yeah. So you've been playing against Jack Cruz and the Savoy. Yeah. And I said, mad, we'll see, we'll see. And uh, on the matinee, he rang and he said, how'd you do today? Sold out. What about tonight? Sold out. What about the rest of the week? Sold out. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing next week? I said, I'm sleeping. He said, you're mad. <laughs> Nobody ever did two weeks in Limerick. Anyway, we went out the second week, and he rang on the Monday. Well, what's it like for the rest of the week? I said, sold out. <laughs> and he said, I don't believe this. He said, what are you doing next week? I said, I'm keeping them. <laughs> <laughs> he said, now I know you're mad. <clears throat> so I said, fair enough. So uh, we came to the end of the week, sold out again, and then he rings me on the, the Sunday. He said, what are you doing next week? Uh, that was week four. I said, uh, I think we'd better go back into films. And he said, no, you've got to keep them. <laughs> I said, why? He said, I guess I've got to come down and see them, see what this is all about. I said, you say I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he came down, and he couldn't get down on the Thursday, and he came down, and the place was sold out again. And I remember him standing at the back of the stalls, and there were 700 seats in the stalls. And all he could see was waves of laughter. You two were on the stage. I don't know, I can't remember what you were doing. I think Pascal had... No trousers on him, it's my face. That's beautiful, Nick. And he had this face painted white. And, uh, anyway, the pair of them were on the stage doing absolutely nothing, but the people were laughing.